In this video we compare high-end headsets, Oculus Rift, HTC Vive and PlayStation VR. Oculus Rift As exciting as that might sound at first, there's plenty of reasons to hold off on making your purchase. First and foremost, you need a very beefy PC to power the headset properly. Oculus recommends an i5-4590 or better, a GTX 970-R9290 or better, at least 8GB of RAM, you're still going to be paying at least $949. You can save money by building your own rig, but that's a very high barrier to entry. There's also the $599 price tag. While it's not outrageously priced for what you get, most people simply aren't willing to spend that much money on a novelty that still very well might crash and burn. HTC Vive Much ado has been made of the Vive's $200 premium over the Rift, but that widespread concern is probably overblown. Not only does it ship with two motion controllers and two sensors, but the difference is minimal when you look at the total cost. If you're willing to spend about $1,600 for Rift setup, what's an additional $200 for motion controllers at that point? In terms of recommended PC specs, the Vive is roughly on par with the Rift. The official site says you should have an i5-4590-FX 8350 or better, a GTX 970 or better, at least 4GB of RAM, one USB 2.0 port and either an HDMI 1.4 port or a DisplayPort 1.2 port. The total number of ports and amount of RAM required are significantly less than the Rift needs, but we're still talking about a very expensive gaming PC. PlayStation VR As of right now, we're still missing some vital information regarding the PlayStation VR. Both the Rift and Vive offer a resolution of 1080x1200 per eye while the PSVR can only offer 960x1080 per eye. An overall 20% drop in resolution. And considering that the other helmets require beefy gaming PCs to drive them properly, the relatively anemic PS4 simply won't be able to offer the same graphical fidelity anyway. Virtually superior. On the PC side, the Rift and the Vive seem more or less on par. Sure, the Rift is less expensive, but you are going to have to pony up extra cash if you want those sweet Oculus Touch controllers later this year. HTC and Valve are leaning more heavily on the whole room VR experience, but it seems that both headsets will likely perform similarly for sit-down VR games. PlayStation VR is a closed platform, so despite the lackluster horsepower, at least the devs know that everyone will be running on the very same machine. Early reports of the PSVR trade show demos have been positive, but it will never be quite as powerful as the Vive and Rift. And, um, if you're hoping to get in on some of the more adult aspects of VR, Sony's lockdown system might be a significant roadblock.